What they do, Jones Crew, it's your girl Crystal, and I'm back at you again with another lit video. You already know the vibes. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you comment down below. Subscribe to the channel as well. Hit the little bell so you never miss any of my videos. Today, I ain't gonna hold you. We gonna jump right on into it. We're coming to you live from Lil' Cam's court date. Now, this is very, very important. I need you guys to pay close attention. This is a reaction video, so I will be commentating throughout. But for the most part, I do want you to hear exactly what is being said here at this court date. Now, this is supposed to be a bond hearing so we're gonna jump right on into the footage guys and like i said i'll be commenting throughout the video make sure you hit that like button and subscribe we're about to find out if lil cam gets bond and we're gonna find out a few details regarding his other cases turn your volume all the way up and listen closely the audio is not that good quality so pay close attention guys so if you listen closely right now guys they're about to call their first witness which happens to be the detective which arrested cam last month in november on the warrant for felon with possession of a firearm so he's about to be get called to the stand right now I mean, judge your we would call officer vincent del broccolo to the stand. okay judge this witness has not been sworn in we saw him swear and affirm the testimony about the body. Did check the whole chip and that he to keep the healthy back? Yes, sir. Thank you. If you can just slide in this and hold the arm, pull the microphone down, and attention to the camera, right in front of you. Thank you so much. Yes. Testing one, two. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Will you please introduce yourself to the court? My name is Officer Vincent Del Rocco. I'm assigned to HPE Scan Division. On November uh, yes, ma'am. Will you spell your last name for the record, please? Yes. Now this is all just a formality where they introduce themselves, introduce the witness, have them spell their name out. O is in the ocean, L is in the ocean. O is in the ocean. On November 22nd of 2022 of this year, uh, were you assigned, you have the same assignment? Yes, sir. Were you uh, asked to assist in the investigation of a fugitive named Cameron Joshua? Yes, sir. And I want to direct your attention to that day. Uh, what did you do that day to attempt to locate Cameron Joshua? My team and I conducted active surveillance in uh, the lower fifth floor area and um, around the 1250 Leon Street. Is that in Harris County, Texas? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Did Mr. Cameron Joshua have an arrest warrant issued for him? Yes, sir. What was that arrest warrant for? It was a pocket warrant for felon possession of firearm. Now, at this point, I'd offer state exhibit number one into evidence, which is a file stamp copy of the arrest warrant for Cameron Joshua. And I'm tendering to opposing counsel. Okay. No objection. So basically, the prosecution side is going first in this case and they are presenting the arrest warrant that they used to pick up Cameron Joshua on as requested by the defense attorney.
So basically, the officer is saying that he had a surveillance team at the apartment of Cameron Joshua, where they seen him entering a charcoal Cadillac, I believe, a vehicle. And that's basically the vehicle where they pulled him over and found the gun sitting under the driver's seat. Um, the ride was taken in the going bus down on lines at, I believe, in the Toronto block, um, where I knew he had a active warrant for his arrest. I instructed a GPS warrant troopers to initiate traffic stops to take him in custody for that warrant. After you instructed DPS to take him into custody, describe to us the events that happened. Uh, DPS March units uh, conducted a uh, what we call a felony traffic stop. Um, he complied with uh, verbal instructions from the uh, from troopers. Um, he was taken into custody without incident, where we then processed the scene. Was his car stopped uh, in the moving lines? Traffic. Yes. What difference that that was, was was his car stopped in the moving lines of traffic? Yes, it was. What did y'all do, or what? How did y'all handle that with this vehicle in the roadway? Um, one of our um, task force officers with gloves on uh, moved that vehicle to a um, parking lot to so basically move the car out of the moving lane of traffic to prevent obstructing or traffic. Were there any other occupants of the vehicle other than Mr. Cameron Joshua? No, sir. Uh, once the car uh, was moved and the scene was moved, what did you do next? I began what was called an inventory search after the rest of the day. Did you locate anything as a result of that search? Yes, underneath the dark scene, I located a black semi automatic Glock 43 firearm. Okay, so right there, you heard the officer say that they found a Glock semi-automatic under the driver's seat, and there was no one in the car but Mr. Cameron. The magazine and the actual firearm. I didn't, so when I cleared the weapon, I loaded the magazine due to evidentiary purposes. I did not count the rounds in the actual magazine. However, there was a round chambered inside that weapon. Did it appear, based on your training and experience, to be a functional firearm? Yes, sir, it did. Please, guys, don't forget to like this video, comment down below, subscribe to the channel. Yo, let me know your thoughts, yo. What do you think about Lil Cam's demeanor swaying back and forth? Do you think he looks nervous or confident? Your Honor, at this point, I'd offer state exhibit number five, which are certified copies of court records from the Superior Court of California, County of Los Angeles, the people of the state of California versus Cameron Isaiah Joshua in the evidence and I'm tendering to opposing counsel. The prosecution submits more evidence, which are certified court copies about his case in California. His demeanor does seem to be a little nervous. Uh, Your Honor, while I don't object to it so often, object to its authenticity, we object that this appears to be a, a docket uh, entry sheet uh, of some sort. We'd object to the hearsay of the mm -hmm. um, Your Honor, these are essentially the court minutes that are reflected here. Um, they are a public record. I and mean, then I would argue that they're not hearsay because they are the court records here that were taken uh, during this case. All right. Objection overruled as Locam's attorney claims that those records are not certified and that they are hearsay. Officer Belbrocolo was the defendant charged um, as a result of you discovering that firearm. Yes, sir. What was he charged with? possession of firearm. Officer uh, Del Broccolo, how long have you been with the Houston Police Department? Approximately 10 years, sir. And I take it that as part of your process of becoming a police officer, obviously, went to the police academy, correct? Yes, sir. You learned how to uh, obviously conduct investigations, correct? Yes, sir. And also how to enter all your information 
in an investigation into the computer system, correct? Yes, sir. And how to create offense reports, is that right? Yes, sir. And you, you did create an offense report in this case, did you not? Yes, sir. Uh, in creating that offense report, I take it nobody gave you a time limit. You had the opportunity to put whatever information you needed into into it, right? Um, um, I don't have our general orders in front of us, but it's recommended that it's it's, it's about to get real good, y'all. We're about to see what this lawyer can do. Certainly. After and, all, and he and is a very high-paid, high-defense attorney, high-profile. The events that transpired, is that fair to say? Yes, sir. The only correction made later on was the VIN number to the vehicle. Understood. Now, on this incident, you were assigned to a task force that was tasked with executing an arrest warrant. Is that right? On the day, yes, sir. You've done that on many occasions, correct? Yes, sir. And in doing so, you had at your disposal a number of police units. Is that right? Um, I would say so, yes, sir. Now, Mr. Joshua, he was a person of particular interest, wasn't he? Yes, sir. Because he was wanted in no small part because folks wanted to talk to him, right? He was subject to um, witness on um, another investigation, yes, sir. Sure, he, he was he was a potential witness in another investigation. Yes, sir. Listen and closely, so they talk about the takeoff murder. Other units, uh, in particular, DPS troopers, correct? On that day at that time, yes, sir. You had about four different units, is that right? Um, to my recollection, yes, I believe so. So you had information about where Cameron and Joshua might be located, might be residing, right? Yes, sir. And you found him at that location, didn't you? Yes, sir. In other words, you found him where your information thought he'd be, right? Yes, sir. And, and you set up surveillance on him, correct? Yes, sir. And the warrant that you had for him, why that was going to be uh, for a weapons case, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Now, of course, that raises your level of attention, doesn't it? Yes, sir. Because officer safety is an important component, right? Of course. So on this day that you executed this warrant, you kept close eyes on Cameron Joshua, didn't you? Yes, sir. And when he came out of this house, went down to this car, didn't see him with any gun, did you? No, sir. You didn't see anything on this person that made you think he had a gun, did you? Not from where I was sitting, yes, sir. Sure, and by that I mean you looked at what he might be carrying, correct? Yeah. Correct. You looked at the outline of his clothes to see whether or not he might have had a weapon on him, correct? Correct. And despite that surveillance, you didn't see any weapon, did you? No, sir. Now, he went straight to a vehicle, didn't he? Correct. And that vehicle was a 2017 Cadillac sedan, correct? Yes, sir. Now, that vehicle isn't registered to Mr. Joshua, is it? So I recollection the um, registration return did not reflect Mr. Um, Joshua. Was that was that a registration that you ran that day? Yes, sir. Okay. And and is it safe to say that on that day when you ran that registration, that registration didn't come back to you? Correct. All right. Uh, did, did you recognize the name of who it came back to? I don't know, so my recollection did not come back to the name at all. Okay, fair enough. In other words, I guess what I'm saying is it didn't come back to Cameron Joshua or a family member of Cameron Joshua's to your knowledge. To my knowledge, the only reason why we believe that vehicle could be possibly owned is based on surveillance photos from the night of that investigation. Fair enough. So so then you you go and and you see Cameron Joshua get in this car. Is that right? Um no one else got in the car with him, is that right? That's right, sir. Uh, you recognize the person getting into that car to be the person you wanted to arrest, correct? Yes, sir. Now, you mentioned that the car went to, uh, I think you said the 2100 block of lines, is that right? Yes, sir. But, but in reality, he was only driving for a minute or so, wasn't he? Um, to my recollection, it was approximately one to under five minutes, I would say. Certainly. So in a matter of minutes, let's say, yes, Cameron Joshua is stopped by the multiple units of the Department of Public Safety, correct? You are now, now tuned into the Jones you're crew. for a weapons offense, correct? Correct. And so did you keep eyes on him while he was driving? Uh, I personally, from the time he left, my team was almost all the way around. So yes, we did have eyes. Some, some form of law enforcement capacity had eyes on Joshua and 
And did you, uh, when you when he was stopped, you described a felony arrest, correct? Yes. Sir. Now, felony arrest means everybody's got weapons out and pointed, doesn't it? Yes. Sir. And so when when that car was pulled over, there were multiple police officers had weapons on that car, right? Yes, sir. Cameron Joshua was entirely cooperative, wasn't he? Yes, sir. When he got out of the car, he didn't have any weapons in his hands, did he? I did not observe any weapons. And at no time did any officer observe Cameron Joshua make any type of furtive or, or uh, secret movement to, to put a, a weapon under his seat. Didn't his attorney uh, going not, so hard I'm for him, y'all. He is going so hard. And to close that loop, you didn't put any such information in your offense report either, did you? No, sir. Now, Cameron Joshua got out of that car and, and you ind indicated that, that you were the person who, who did the inventory search. Is that yes, right? sir. And the, the weapon that you found was not visible to the naked eye, was it? Um, this is a very, very good attorney. You can okay. tell by his cross-examination. I, I apologize. I was inartfully worded. Uh, for, to a person uh, standing outside the car looking at the seat, it wasn't like it was tucked between the seat and the center console, right? It, it was not in plain view, that's what you're referring to. It was not in plain view. The handle wasn't visible underneath the seat. You had to get down and look for it, didn't you? Yes. Okay. And uh, 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 th then you, you recovered that weapon. That's the weapon you tagged in, right? Yes, sir. Now, sir, uh, you, you mentioned uh, or, or there's been some discussion about, about the, the California Penal Code. You aware whether or not uh, possession, uh, or excuse me, the offense for which Mr. Cameron Joshua, well, let me strike that. Uh, when Cameron Joshua was arrested, he was arrested on a warrant that was obtained by an officer other than you. Is that fair to say? That's right. Okay. But really, at the end of the day, he is saying a bunch of nothing. I can have just a minute, girl. I mean, come on. At the end of the day, we all seen the footage. We seen everything. We all seen his bond conditions. Lil' Cam was not supposed to be around any type of firearm. He wasn't even supposed to be driving a car. So you can clearly see that he broke the conditions of that bond release. Your Honor, at this point in time, the state would offer state exhibit number two, which is a motion for bond conditions and cause number 173. 9192 states exhibit number three, uh, which is a certified copy of an order for pretrial supervision in bond conditions uh, in cause number 1739192 and states exhibit number four, which is indictment paperwork uh, for cause number 1739192. These are all certified copies. You are in a continuum to close the top four. Once again, the prosecution submits some more evidence which is the indictment documents, as well as his bond conditions that he clearly violated. No objection, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, the defense would offer into evidence defendant's exhibit number one and defendant's exhibit number two. Uh, these are copies of, text of the California Penal Code, 2021 California Penal Code, uh, uh, larceny sections uh, 487 and 489. Uh, these are copies of the penal code, but we ask the court to take judicial notice of those of those provisions. Okay. And Your Honor, on that evidence, uh, the defense in this hearing will rest. Thank you. Well, state, Mr. Your Honor, I would reserve my time for uh, Your Honor, the the state is offered up as proof in this case. Uh, evidence of the circumstantial act of possession of a firearm. They've offered up that Cameron Joshua was arrested on a warrant. However, what they demonstrated is strictly circumstantial possession. And by that, I mean there's absolutely no affirmative link between Cameron Joshua and the gun found in the vehicle. They failed to articulate any control over the weapon any actual knowledge of the weapon, any possession of the car, any link to the car. In other words, Cameron and Joshua could very conceivably have simply gotten into somebody else's car with a gun underneath the seat. They haven't demonstrated any furtive movement, any attempt to conceal the weapon, any possession of the weapon beforehand. 
under the law of affirmative links, judge, this is tenuous at best. The crime of carrying a weapon requires that the person actually, excuse me, exercise care, custody, control, and management over the object. While they've demonstrated that he exercised control over the car, they've wholly failed to demonstrate any knowledge on his part that the weapon was there. As such, Judge, we'd, we'd argue that the evidence is wholly insufficient to justify holding him at no bond. There is going to be some argument I anticipate about this issue involving California. The state has offered in the evidence in support of this charge in California what, what is a, a, appears to be a recitation of a docket sheet. I had a chance to look at it last night, and I've had a chance to look at the California Penal Code. It is unclear to me whether or not Cameron Joshua has been charged with a felony or a misdemeanor in California. What I see in the docket sheet is that he has been punished with 180 days in the county jail probated for two years. In one section of the docket sheet, it, refer it references California Penal Code Section 487A, which says that it can apparently be punished as a felony or as a misdemeanor. It is an offense of grand larceny. I've talked to several California lawyers, try to wrap my mind around it. But the reality is that this document that they're that they're introducing in support of the problem in California does not definitively state that it's a felony. The reason that's significant, Judge, to my understanding is that the warrant he was arrested on was for felon in possession of a firearm. Yet we don't have any supporting documents to demonstrate that it was actually a felony that he was on a, a probation for out of California, which would serve as a predicate offense for this offense. I would submit, Your Honor, that if in fact he was not a felon at the time of the possession of this case, his act of carrying the weapon is not necessarily a violation of the law, although it may be a violation of the condition that the court imposed as part of his prior probate or, or his, his prior release on bond for the felony offense of possessing a fake ID. Given the circumstances, we would submit that there are more than sufficient conditions that the court can impose that can satisfy the court's concern about public safety and that the court should consider granting Mr. Joshua a bond and imposing conditions such as home confinement or curfew or an electronic monitor to justify any concerns this court might have about safety. But given the circumstances the state has uh, offered up, we'd submit it's woefully insufficient to justify holding him uh, and denying him his liberty interest in bail. Okay, so in a nutshell, basically he's saying in possession of the firearm that charge should not be valid because possession is basically nine-tenths of the law. He did not have it on his person. It was sitting in the car under the car seat, and he's arguing that the car was not registered to little Cam, so therefore that gun charge should not stick to his client. Now, also, he goes on to argue that in regards to his case in California, they have not yet charged him with a felony or misdemeanor yet. So he's stating that how can he be a felon in possession of a firearm when they haven't even charged him with a felony yet in California? The driver's seat where the defendant was located and there was no one else in that vehicle. Um, furthermore, uh, regarding the defendant's California felony conviction, I mean, if you, the court goes through state's exhibit number five, which is the docket entry from the defendant's California case, I, you will see that California codes that grand theft as a felony. There's the letters FEL uh, for felony in those court records. Um, additionally, this court ordered the defendant under his bond conditions not to possess any firearm for the purposes of keeping our community safe. Um, the defendant clearly violated this court's condition uh, that day when Officer Del Broccolo arrested him on his warrant 
for possessing a firearm and found him with another firearm. So, Your Honor, I would ask the court to hold the defendant, uh, revoke his bond and hold him at no bond under 11B of the Texas Constitution in cause number 173992 and set sufficient bonds in cause numbers 1796046 and 1796093. Thank you. Okay, so then the prosecution comes back and argues that within the paperwork from California on the indictment, it clearly states that it is a felony. And also he states regardless to whether that was a felony or not, his bond condition for him being released out on bond with the ankle monitor, he was not supposed to be around any firearms or anything like that. You guys seen the bond condition. Now also he has clearly violated that with being at the bowling alley, the night takeoff was murdered. He was clearly spotted in the footage with a firearm and that is why he violated and that is why he had a warrant out for his arrest and then when they arrested him he had another firearm so that's exactly what the prosecution is saying now also they did go on a quick recess Make sure you hit that like button. Comment down below, guys. Let me know your thoughts on the situation. The judge is about to speak. In cause number, I'm really going to give your condition, sir. Uh, do not pick up any new law violations. No drugs, no alcohol, plan of your analysis. Do not leave outside Harris County. Uh, and I know this, I'm not saying in particular was county. I am uh, saying it's only located in Harris County. Unless you can order and get a court permission. Uh, in addition to that, the court will also be placing you with GPS monitoring device. Listen very closely, guys. He is not getting when off. When you're attending school, provide your attorney with a letter on letterhead saying the dates and times that you will be so right here the judge is just reiterating the terms of his bond condition this does not mean he's getting off as you're going to clearly hear then along with carrying weapon, the previous felony condition that you let you pick up while you were online, the court's going to set that bond at 300000 as it relates to cause number 1739192. The case that you were on bond, this court gave you conditions, uh, one of those being not to pick up any new law violations, also uh, not to have possession of firearms. The court is going to set that as a zero bond, your letter be. Okay, I know this may be a little confusing because she did issue him a bond for two out of three of the charges that he got. As you can see, she issued him a bond for the new charge that he picked up while he was picked up on that arrest warrant and they found that gun under the driver's seat. He got a $300,000 bond for that. And then also for the new charge where they seen him on the footage at the takeoff incident where takeoff was killed that he got a three hundred thousand dollar bond for as well but the other charge that it seems may be in either california or another new charge that he has picked up that one has zero bond so even though he may have a bond for the other two charges he will not have a bond for the third charge meaning he better not even waste his money trying to bond out on those other two charges because once he pays that bond they will still keep him in custody because one of the charges has no bond zero bond so as you can see his bond was still denied for one of his charges guys little cam will remain in custody as you can see they have an open investigation against him as the prosecution clearly stated not only that but these charges are federal charges these gun charges for a felony in possession of a firearm those are federal charges so that's a clear sign that the fbi is involved and they will be investigating him in thorough debt in regards to all these charges okay so this is a good look guys i'm really happy to 
bring this to you today. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.